All right, uh, I guess we can get started. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Naveen Nandan. Uh, I'm part of uh, Confluent uh, Solutions Engineering team. And uh, for today's workshop, uh, we'll be going through this topic, uh, building event-driven APIs. And uh, we'll see you know, how we can build uh, building uh, event-driven APIs uh, through a Confluent platform. All right, so to get started, uh, we're probably you know level set uh, everyone's uh, you know understanding of what event driven APIs are. Uh, so, what exactly uh, do you think you know event driven APIs are? How is it different from uh, APIs that we typically uh, use from applications or services like where we send in a request and get back a response? So, we'll try to level set and understand what's the definition of an event driven API and go forward from there. So the best way to compare uh, even driven API or a streaming API uh, with respect to traditional APIs, which are REST APIs or RESTful way of calling, uh, you know, sending a request uh, to a server, getting back a response, and then plugging in that uh, response into your application. So that would be the RESTful way where you have a server, uh, you have an application, application sends a request to the server, you get a response back and you plug it in uh, into the application. So this type of uh, API would be you know, what is called as a pull uh, request uh, that you send to a server and get back the response. Uh, the event driven way would be slightly uh, different where you have uh, the server and instead of the application querying the server for a response, uh, the server basically will generate events and push that into the application. So every time there is a new event on the server side, uh, it will push uh, the uh, event uh, and that particular data point uh, to the application where the application can use it. So here there's no initial uh, you know, request per se uh, for every time the application needs to get new data. Uh, the only connection that it makes to the server is to establish the initial session. And from then on, the server will send every time there's a new event uh, responses to the uh, application. So that's... Uh, at a high level, the difference between you know what a RESTful way of uh, querying APIs would be as compared to an event-driven way of querying APIs. So that's a uh, you know, fundamental change in the way how data is served on the application side, one being the pull query, uh, the other being a push uh, type of application. All right, so the whole you know, concept of uh, event-driven APIs or streaming APIs came about with uh, advancements in the way uh, protocols were developed for the internet. Uh, so if we you know, particularly look at this concept called as HTTP pipelining, uh, what happened there was uh, traditionally you had clients would send requests to the server uh, and then the server would uh, you know, do some processing and send the response back to the uh, client. And subsequently, if you had additional requests that would be sent to the server uh, and you get a response back in the same order. Uh, with HTTP pipelining, what uh, essentially was uh, kind of uh, changed is that you could send uh, requests to the server asynchronously and then you would be able to get uh, responses uh, back from the server uh, asynchronously as well. So the applications would basically take care of uh, handling the responses and the server uh, takes care of handling the requests uh, irrespective of the order in which the requests come in. Right. So I think for uh, understanding again streaming APIs, uh, there was uh, a lot of research done by Google on the protocol called Speedy, and that eventually became into a standard, which is HTTP2, uh, which is the streaming protocol, which is used by internet applications today. So if you want to read up uh, more on that, uh, there's a lot of detail as to you know, why uh, you know, streaming uh, protocols are a lot more uh, efficient in terms of both uh, performance as well as latency. So that's something which uh, you can uh, go about reading further. Right. So for the purpose of this uh, workshop, uh, we'll go through a specific uh, use case, which is uh, customer 360. Uh, now, with the current situation in the world, we can always you know, think of extending this uh, to further use cases, like uh, building a patient 360, uh, building you know, a citizen 360 model, and so on. Right. So those are things which uh, could be used uh, you know, uh, to build, uh, get data from multiple different systems, stitching it together and having a central view of uh, the uh, end user. Okay. So we're going to build uh, 
a customer 360 using you know confluent platform and uh, primarily a component called is uh, case equal db uh, so for this now we look at this specific uh, pipeline that we're going to build uh, we're going to start from a couple of uh, source systems so you can imagine <clears throat> uh, data about a particular user or a customer sitting across uh, multiple different systems so one could be a, a relational database like sql server uh, which contains, say, maybe a profile information about that particular user or customer. Uh, you could have transactional information uh, that particular customer has with your business or your, uh, you know, establishment, uh, and uh, the transactional information could be sitting in a different uh, database, say, for example, uh, Oracle database. Uh, we can make use of um, what is called as connectors, uh, which come as part of the uh, Confluent platform ecosystem. So you can run uh, a Kafka Connect uh, worker uh, and deploy these connectors to source the data from these uh, different uh, database systems. Um, once we get uh, the data into uh, the Confluent platform, uh, primarily what we have is uh, the data being stored in Kafka Topics, and we uh, you know, kind of build some logic to stitch together the data from uh, these multiple sources to have a single view of uh, the customer or the user. Right? Uh, the data could come from uh, other uh, source systems as well, so not necessarily databases. It could directly come in from applications, uh, and uh, the applications could communicate uh, to a backend service, and the backend service could um, write the data as an event into a Kafka topic as well. So, in terms of integrations to different systems, uh, the connectors would be. Uh, one way of looking at you know what systems can you bring data into Confluent. The second would be in terms of the uh, applications uh, that you develop uh, programmatically, which can also publish data into Confluent. So once uh, we source the data and we have it uh, within the Confluent platform, the next step would be to uh, build the logic uh, to stitch together data from these multiple sources. So we're going to use case equal DB, uh, which is a stream processing engine. Uh, which allows us to explore the data which is uh, within a Kafka topic, and uh, we will uh, perform some operations on top of the data, which is like uh, applying some kind of structure to the uh, data, uh, which essentially could come in you know various different formats. Um, we'll apply some processing logic to join across the multiple streams, and eventually we'll build what is called as a materialized customer 360 view. So this would be the uh, view of which an application can query. And we look at uh, both uh, the aspect of you know, being able to issue a pull query, which is called as, uh, which is similar to a REST API, where we uh, you know, submit a particular query to the backend uh, case equal DB server. We get uh, the results as a result set back into the application, and we can plug it within the application. And we look at also the concept of push queries, which uh, essentially, we're submitting a query to the server, which is constantly running. And as and when there are results to that processing query, uh, we get uh, the updates on the application side. So we look at how KSQL DB can help us to, uh, you know, do both uh, the RESTful, uh, you know, pull queries as well as um, the push queries, which are uh, even different. All right. So just to kind of step through, you know, each of the, uh, you know each of the steps uh, that we'll be doing as part of this pipeline. So the first is we deploy uh, the necessary components as part of the platform. So you would have Confluent, which contains at the core uh, Apache Kafka. Then you would have uh, KSQL DB, which is the stream processing engine. Uh, then you would have Kafka Connect, which is a worker process that uh, manages uh, getting data from the source systems. Uh, and we deploy connectors to it. So once we deploy the connectors, essentially, the data uh, gets um, you know, captured in real time from the source systems. So here we deploy two different connectors, which is a Debezium CDC source connector that can read from the uh, SQL Server database. And then we'll have the Oracle CDC source connector, which can read from the uh, Oracle database. And uh, the CDC connectors work in a fashion that they constantly monitor the underlying tables uh, that needs to be read uh, from the source side. And every time there is a uh, DML change. That is, if there is an insert, update, or a delete event that occurs on the source tables, uh, it gets published, uh, captured, and published into the Kafka topic as a message. 
So every time there's a new uh, you know, profile uh, entry for a customer, part of this an update into an existing customer's profile, uh, those will be captured in real time and propagated uh, through this pipeline. So into the uh, Kafka topic. So as we see on the right-hand side, uh, once the connectors are up and running, uh, we get the data, which is from customer master, and the transaction information, which is uh, the secondary uh, you know, data set that we're capturing. Uh, in addition, uh, so on the source side, uh, we can say that on SQL Server, we have three different tables. So customer master, customer address master, and customer phone master. Uh, and on the Oracle uh, database, we would have all transactions as well as the account master. So we see that each of these tables are captured as different, uh, multiple different uh, Kafka topics. And what we're going to do with JSQL DB is uh, stitch together this uh, profile information as well as the transaction information to build uh, the customer 360. So eventually what we're going to get to is a materialized uh, customer 360 view. So that would contain both the profile information as well as the transaction information. So not necessarily just uh, the transactions uh, as raw, uh, but we can also perform some processing logics like uh, you know, getting the total number of transactions for that particular uh, user, uh, or in the case that it is a transaction system that um, captures payment information, we can see the total transaction amount and things like that. So the idea over here is that we would eventually arrive at this materialized customer 360 view. Uh, and uh, as and when any changes are being made on the source system sites, they propagate and flow through this pipeline to update the customer 360 view. So on the application side, we'll see that we can get the data in real time uh, as the changes are being made on the source side. Right, so step one is, like I mentioned earlier, we source the data, uh, which means running the connectors, uh, reading from the SQL Server as well as Oracle da database, uh, the customer information as well as uh, transaction information, and that gets pushed into Kafka topics on the Confluent uh, platform. And the second step would be to build the pipeline, uh, which means that uh, we're going to run a series of SQL statements that can be executed on KSQL DB, uh, the stream processing engine, and that would uh, you know help us to get to the final view, which is the customer 360. Right. So once we build the customer 360 view, we can issue two kinds of queries again via SQL. So one is a pull query where we execute. So typically, you know, what we do in databases as well, we write a query, we execute that uh, against the server, and we would be able to get the result set back, uh, which can be populated on the uh, application side. Uh, the other is the push query where we are submitting a query to the server, and we don't expect a result set to come back and then we stop the uh, communication with the server. Rather, the uh, query is constantly running, and we have updates which are being made uh, on the, uh, so every time the uh, updates are being made on the source systems, it would propagate through the pipeline uh, and would send a new event uh, as the result to the application. So the push query is something that runs uh, continuously. And as and when there are new uh, events or changes on the source system side, it runs through the processing steps and will populate as a new event on the uh, targets. So, once we're done with uh, you know, uh, building that customer 360 view and deciding you know, what is the kind of queries that we want to uh, use from within the application, uh, the next step is to uh, call the queries uh, via an API. So we can call the queries, like I mentioned before, uh, through either a REST API uh, or via the streaming API. So the support for both is uh, enabled and accessible via the uh, KSQL DB, uh, and you would be able to uh, query, uh, you know, uh, regardless of uh, the way the application uh, wants to use the data. So, if the application expects uh, to get the data and uh, populate it on the application side and just uh, switch off after that, uh, and then you know send us you know subsequent request later when it needs uh, new data, uh, then we go in for the restful way of calling. So we would issue a pull query, uh, get the response back, and plug it in. Uh, which is what we're doing in the first two uh, you know, calls. And uh, as we see in the third call, we're executing what is called as So we're sending a push query to the server. The server 
a connection is made, uh, the API opens up the session uh, and it's listening to uh, hear new events from the server. Right? So that's what we'll be uh, you know, going through uh, in terms of this specific uh, workshop. All right, so if uh, if you're interested in running through this workshop uh, and you're setting it up on your side, uh, uh, have the code made available on GitHub and that's something which you can execute uh, by yourself. So as long as you have Docker installed, you would be able to execute uh, the uh, you know, entire pipeline and you would be able to uh, see you know what's happening uh, with the entire process that I just described. So let me just go back uh, or go into the terminal. And uh, for the benefit of uh, the workshop, I've already run this uh, specific pipeline. So we can explore uh, that pipeline through what is called as uh, control center. Uh, so control center is like monitoring and a development environment uh, for a Confluent platform. Uh, and when we go into the KSQL DB uh, you know, section within the control center, uh, we can click on the application, click on say flow. Uh, so I've already built that pipeline that we were just talking about earlier. So you'll see that it starts from the uh, raw data capture from the uh, source systems, which are the SQL Server and the Oracle databases. And then we would be able to build uh, you know, some of the processing steps, uh, like streams and tables, uh, applying the logic for uh, joining across these multiple streams uh, and uh, you know, calculating things like the total number of transactions for that particular customer or user. And eventually we'll get to what is called as a customer 360 view, which is a materialized view that we expose uh, for the application to query uh, using the streaming APIs. So if we just examine uh, you know, some of the objects that we've created through this whole pipeline, we see that uh, we start with uh, the Kafka topics. So the Kafka topics, which are uh, you know, a direct mapping of the tables that we're sourcing from the uh, database. So you would have uh, one specific database table mapped to uh, one specific, uh, you know, Kafka topic, and then we'll have, uh, you know, the subsequent objects which are created uh, within KSQL DB. So we have various different streams uh, that are created, and we have various different tables uh, that are created within uh, KSQL. So here, uh, there's only one table that we're creating because all the uh, you know, steps for processing are done as streams, and then eventually we get to uh, this table, which will populate the customer 360 view. Now, the difference between a stream and a table uh, within um, KSQL is that a stream is a collection of uh, immutable events, which means that for every single message that comes in for a particular customer, uh, we would have a new message that is created and stored within the stream. So you cannot update or delete uh, an event that has already uh, occurred. So that would be something that is available as a record uh, over time. And then uh, you would you know, basically have a sequence of all those uh, messages uh, stored as part of the stream. Uh, in the case of a table, it's slightly different. With the table, what we would be able to do is kind of collapse uh, you know, some of those events to have only the latest uh, you know, value uh, as part of the table. So, uh, the tables in KSQL DB use the underlying concept of what is called as compaction within uh, Kafka. Uh, and a, a topic can be compacted in the sense that if I have a new uh, value for the same customer ID, say, for example, for the customer's profile, uh, I would just update and keep the latest value uh, as part of the uh, customer 360 day. Right? So that's something which uh, is you know different in terms of uh, a stream and table. So once we have built all those objects, uh, our application will be able to uh, directly query uh, the uh, customer 360 view. So maybe before uh, we query it uh, through an API, uh, we can just look at you know how these uh, objects look like from within KSQL. So if I just do say show streams. Oops. Let me just back there All 
All right, this should be better. Okay, we see all the topics uh, within uh, in a confluent which is created. So we see there are some topics which are created from the Oracle tables. We see there is customer uh, information, which is a profile and phone and address. These come from the uh, SQL server side. And as I you know, showed earlier to the control center, we also have uh, the streams which are created on the uh, KSQL DB. So we see that there are multiple streams that are created based on the topics. And then we have derived streams which are uh, basically created uh, you know, by joining you know, some of the streams to generate the customer 360 view. And finally, we have the customer 360 uh, view, which is a KSQL DB table. So we can query this uh, customer 360 view. Uh, you know, directly from within KSQL. So here, say for example, I set, so this is uh, basically a push query where I'm sending in uh, you know, a query to the server. Uh, I'm saying emit changes, uh, just letting the server know that every time there is a new event, I want some changes to appear uh, on the, uh, on the, you know, as part of the result set. And uh, this is basically what we call as a push query. So the server has uh, received the query, which is select start from C360 underscore view, and it has uh, image changes. So it knows that it needs to send in uh, a new event uh, back to the result set. So as you can see here, this is a query that is continuously running. And I have uh, to basically interrupt uh, this query uh, because uh, otherwise, it's you know expecting new events to come from the server side. All right, so if uh, a continuous or a streaming query is not what we desire, and if the application just wants to call it the uh, you know usual way of you know sending in a request and getting back a response, uh, we can send in a query that is of this type. So this is called as a pull query. So a pull query here would mean that. I am sending a query to the server and notice that I'm not using like a emit changes. So I'm not letting the server know that every time there's a new event as part of the uh, you know result set of that query, uh, you need to send me. Uh, rather, what I'm telling you is that I just want results of this query at this point in time. So I'm just looking at the state of the table at this point in time and I want uh, the result sent back. So here it says that, okay, uh, there's no you know specific uh, items which are part of this uh, you know query so i just you know give you a response back okay so now how do we go about uh, calling this through apis so since this is part of our <clears throat> api days event uh, what we're interested in is to connect applications to some of these uh, systems which are built in the back end uh, and expose them through uh, apis so here, for example, we have a way to query, uh, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to query uh, the customer 360 view uh, using a, similar to a REST API call. So it's going to be a pull query, which is going to be sent uh, to the KSQL DB server. And I'm saying query the stream. And this is the query that I want you to execute uh, and give me back the results. So when I send that, I basically get a response immediately back from the server, uh, which is <clears throat> this JSON object uh, that we receive from the uh, server. All right, so we've got basically the customer 360 details for uh, this particular customer using this account. Uh, and uh, that's what we can use to populate within the application. So here, this is again, a uh, restful way of calling um, the uh, KSQL DB server. We send a request, get the response back, uh, and it would process uh, the data on the KSQL DB side through a pull query, uh, and it would populate uh, the results back into the response object and give it back to the application. So here it's just a one-time send, uh, and you get a, a response back, and you uh, end the communication with the KSQL DB server. The second aspect is a uh, streaming query. So here the difference is, let's just explore what's the difference. So here I'm gonna send a query to the server. Again, the same best uh, endpoint. 
But primarily what we're doing different is that we're sending the query which is select from the customer 360 view, uh, but I want you to emit changes, right? So which means that I'm gonna keep this communication link with the server open and I'm gonna wait for the server to send me uh, any new event that occurs on the server side. So here we see that uh, the server sends pretty much all the events uh, that it has for the customer 360 view, and it's waiting for uh, any new event uh, to occur on the uh, source table so that it can propagate that uh, as a response to this API. So this is uh, a streaming API, so which means the communication uh, is open to the server. Uh, the Once the communication is established, it uh, expects to uh, hear any new responses or events that happen on the server side, and it will get uh, pushed to the uh, um, API response uh, to the application. Okay. So that's uh, in a nutshell uh, what I wanted to walk through uh, as part of today's workshop. So again, uh, for those of you who are uh, interested in you know, uh, kind of exploring this uh, on your own and you're know, trying it out and probably making some modifications to suit uh, you know, some of the APIs that you're designing. Uh, so uh, you can find uh, the code on my GitHub. So that should be up over here. Yeah, so that should be on uh, the GitHub. Uh, you can uh, you know get the slides from the uh, organizers and you would be able to uh, you know, uh, clone this repo and then you know execute um, this particular uh, you know example. Um, yeah, so highly uh, encourage you to do that. Uh, and again, when you're thinking of uh, designing APIs, uh, primarily you know look at it from an application uh, standpoint or a service standpoint. Uh, you know what that service or the application feature needs to serve. Uh, does it need constant updates from the server? If that's the case, rather than polling the server multiple different times. Uh, you might want to, um, you know, consider uh, build, uh, you know, leveraging on things like streaming APIs, where you establish a, a, a communication link with the server and then leave the session open, and the server would send uh, the events uh, through a push fashion uh, to the application. So in that way, you uh, basically avoid, you know, multiple round trips from the application to the server, uh, and you simply have uh, one communication link that is continuously uh, established between the server and the application. So that's uh, my time, I guess, uh, and what I wanted to share. So I'll be open to any questions if you have. Uh, I'll just see if the chat has any questions. Uh, if not, oh, sorry, the terminal window was too small. Uh, I hope this is better. So I can just you know go through you know what we did on the terminal side. Sorry, I wasn't uh, having a parallel window open uh, to check what was happening on the chat. But yeah, essentially, you know what I have is yeah uh, the topics that we have created, uh, the streams uh, which are part of KSQL DB that we have uh, created, uh, the tables uh, which is the customer 360 view materialized view that we created, uh, and the different ways that we uh, had run the query. So. Uh, the query with image changes is a push query, uh, and that would give me continuous events and keep the com communication with the server open. Uh, then we have, um, yeah, the pull query, which is sending a query to the server and getting the result set back, which we can use within the application. Uh, the other two uh, are, yeah, so uh, you know, querying these. Uh, you know, pull query and push queries and executing them through different uh, API calls. So the first was the uh, pull query type where we send in, uh, you know, a request and got the response back from the server immediately. And then we close the communication with the server. And the second was uh, to keep the communication channel with the server open uh, and execute the uh, customer 360 view uh, as a push query. And we wait for any new events to happen on the server side. So we see that you know the communication to the server is still open until we interrupt it. So here I've interrupted the session and it's basically uh, you know winding up that API call. <clears throat> uh, 
All right, so for any other questions, um, uh, thanks, Ananda. Uh, so is any uh, authentication built on or we need to add our own? So here uh, for this particular uh, example that I've run, there is uh, no authentication uh, used. Uh, so it's <clears throat> primarily open communication with the server side and we pretty much uh, you know, uh, just send the request and response back uh, as uh, you know, the query parameters. That's pretty much. Uh, you can enable uh, you know authentication you know, specifically for KSQL DB, uh, but in terms of whether you want to say set up like a SASL plane and so on, that's something which uh, we'll have to you know uh, explore further. Uh, another question from uh, Tarun: So event-driven systems become complex over time. Ways to keep it simple. Uh, yes, it can get complex. The reason being that we have uh, multiple different uh, you know, producers and com consumers, if we can call the different source systems and target systems and the applications that communicate with uh, the central you know, confluence system. Uh, so um, yeah, so there's multiple you know, different systems to integrate, which means that uh, stitching together data, having you know, consistency across all these systems is something which uh, needs to be taken care of. Uh, reliability is something that you want to take care of, which means that if one of these systems, uh, you know, through the entire pipeline fails, you want to ensure that, uh, you know, the systems are back up and uh, running fine. Um, and the other could be in terms of, um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, ensuring that uh, the results that you build on the pipeline are, again, you know, consistent in some sense, and you have the exact results. Uh, you know, being updated on say like a customer 360 table. So the processing steps is something that you need to maintain, uh, you know, over a period of time. Uh, and if you update one or the other, you should ensure that the it propagates to the rest of the steps as well. Uh, the last one would be in terms of the communication patterns with the uh, central system. Uh, so uh, if you have producers and consumers that expect data to, you know, uh, send uh, data and receive data in a asynchronous fashion, that should be something which uh, is implicitly taken care of. The other uh, communication pattern, which is synchronous. So you know, producer sends uh, an event, your consumer expects that to be processed and only then you have uh, you know, the next event being processed. So if you need a synchronous uh, communication pattern, then uh, you know, there are you know, multiple different semantics which can be uh, used from within the uh, uh, you know Apache Kafka at its core. So Apache Kafka at its core, uh, you know, supports exactly ones, at least ones, and at most one semantics. So that's something which uh, you can use uh, depending on the communication patterns that your applications and the services that connect to Confluent uh, expect. All right, so. That should be all in terms of uh, the uh, content that I wanted to share. So again, uh, it's up on GitHub, and if anyone wants to, uh, you know, run and execute and uh, you know build your own uh, systems and you know kind of extend from there, uh, feel free to do so. And if uh, you think there's something which is uh, more interesting, like for example, if there's a way through which you can enable uh, authentication, and if that's something that you want to test and uh, you'd like to share back to the repo, that's uh, something which I uh, would highly encourage you to do so as well. All right, so that's uh, my time. Thanks to everyone who uh, you know, um, you know, took the time to uh, you know, attend this workshop uh, and uh, you know, making time uh, for you know, attending the conference as well and uh, enjoy the rest of the API, API Days conference. Yep, so I can share the uh, GitHub repo in the chat as well, if that's uh, something that you want to go through. And have a uh, good uh, rest of the conference. Thank you. Also, oh, just a uh, plug before uh, I end my uh, session. Uh, there'd be uh, my colleagues uh, from the solutions engineering team, uh, head of solutions engineering, uh, Ananda, who will be talking about 
uh, you know, a, a round table about uh, using Confluent in the financial services industry. Uh, and we'll have uh, Mark, who's going to talk about, um, you know, uh, rest, uh, restful uh, event-driven APIs 